volunteers and pioneers in association with Sempra LNG. We have the ability to promise power ships to anywhere around the world in less than 30 days and LNG to power to anywhere around the world in less than six months. Hello and welcome to LNG TV and our latest episode of Frontiers and Pioneers. Today we'll be talking to Zeynep Harazi, Managing Director of Car Powership, the world's largest operator of integrated floating power plants. So Zeynep, it is a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for joining us here on LNG TV. Thank you very much. The pleasure is all mine. Welcome, Zeynep. Your power ships have already had a remarkable impact. Um, it would be wonderful to understand your future plans and likewise your ambitions in the LNG to power space. With pleasure. So as Car Power Ship, we started our floating power plant fleet, power ships, in 2010. Today we have 26 power ships that are completed and all of them are dual fuel. So they can operate both on liquid fuels and natural gas. And we operate them uh, in certain locations with liquid fuel, some locations with pipeline gas, and some locations with LNG via FSR use. So our aim is to convert as many power ships in our fleet to gas operations as much as possible. For that, we have signed the first two LNG to power contracts in Africa namely Mozambique and Senegal. And the Senegal FSRU is currently on its way from uh, Singapore to Senegal and will be operational with LNG in mere couple of weeks. Like any pioneer, the company has been innovative, highly entrepreneurial and bold. Most players find a customer, um, find financing, and then build. You build and finance, then find a customer, find a market, um, and manage the risk along that. How important has that entrepreneurial approach been to your success? That is probably the most important aspect of our business model. Uh, our business model is based on build it and they shall come. And we don't think it's a risky business model at all because we know that today and tomorrow, people need and will continue to need low cost, reliable, clean, and fast track electricity. So the only thing we're doing different is to build them in advance before there are any contracts so that we can deploy them faster than any other company in the world. And today we have the ability to promise power ships to anywhere around the world in less than 30 days and LNG to power to anywhere around the world in less than six months. And we've proven this with our track record. In Guinea Conakry, we've delivered and made operational 120 megawatts in less than 15 days. Sudan, 150 megawatts in less than 12 days. In Indonesia, 120 megawatts, less than 54 days. Mozambique, the same, and uh, various countries around the world uh, in a similar manner. We've signed the first two LNG to power contracts in Senegal and Mozambique. And uh, we will be delivering our FSRU to Senegal in the next couple of weeks. And we are very, very excited to deliver electricity to in a very fast track manner, because we know the impact of the electricity we provide on the economy. So the opportunity cost of blackouts, opportunity cost of lack of electricity on the grid has a 30 to 60 times negative impact on the economy. So any day we can bring it faster means many of these countries are one step ahead in their development journey. Zainab, your power ships are playing an integral role in the energy transition. Why do you feel that LNG is such an important bridging fuel? Uh, that's a very good question because we are also in full support of the renewable development programs of the countries. 
So sometimes people tend to think, oh, why not go renewables instead of LNG? Well, we say you can't really have either or, you need to have both. Because even though renewables are amazing in their emissions, unfortunately, they still have certain technical limitations whereby you cannot have a full grid operating on renewables as baseload electricity and uh, for grid stability purposes as well. So uh, if I may, the power uh, technology of renewables, especially solar, uh, have been improving every year, both from a cost perspective, the land requirement perspective, and uh, efficiency perspective, but they are not at a stage where you can have a full grid relying on renewables. For example, if you covered all of United States without leaving one centimeter, one square feet, uh, without covering with solar panels, you still would not be able to meet the electricity demand in the United States with solar electricity. And unfortunately today, the renewables cannot operate when there is no sun, when there is no wind, when there is no water. They need to be coupled with battery solutions. So these battery solutions are not yet feasible to make it competitive with gas to power. And also uh, they destabilize grids, which requires the flexibility of thermal electricity to Step, restabilize the grids and act as complementary uh, source of generation. So in short, uh, today, still the base load has to be thermal electricity complemented with renewables and the cleanest and the most economic thermal electricity is with natural gas. And for those countries who do not have natural gas, LNG, is a wonderful solution. It's flexible, it's fast, it's clean, secure. Uh, it's, it's just a wonderful solution for gas to power. Your ability to build meaningful partnerships is obviously testament in your, your um, project in South Africa. And those partnerships with host countries, of course, um, local stakeholders and the likes of Mole and Shell, your ability to, to really form those relationships is impressive. How key do you think that is to your success? Absolutely, uh, we are extremely capable in fast track project execution, especially in power generation and floating storage regasification units. So we try to partner up with countries, companies who have competitive advantages that complement ours, like Mall, Mitsui Osaka Lines, uh, who are experts in uh, LNG uh, fleet. Uh, especially LNG carriers. So we have a joint venture with them which under which we build our FSRUs 50-50, which is called Carmoy. Uh, Shell is a, a wonderful LNG supplier, reliable, reputable, technically and commercially. And uh, they're our exclusive LNG supplier for the South Africa project because they gave the best financial and technical offer out of 12 LNG suppliers around the world. So it's very good to combine forces while implementing these mega infrastructure projects. And it's very, very important to do them with trusted partners. Zainab, you were recognized as a rising star in women in LNG during ExxonMobil's Power Play Awards. And you also champion diversity in the industry. Um, what does diversity mean to you and to Car Powership? Um, thank you very much. So we don't necessarily see diversity as men and women. We see diversity as having various perspectives around the table from different cultures, regions, ages, uh, technical and commercial backgrounds and educations. So uh, while executing such mega infrastructure projects in a very fast track manner, we need to give decisions on the spot and follow those decisions through with absolute confidence and certainty. So the only way to achieve a healthy decision making 
is to hear both sides of the argument. So our company culture aspires to be one that of pure idea-based meritocracy, whereby even the most junior participant in a meeting can challenge the uh, senior person so uh, that we can achieve the best result and push that forward uh, as a team. You've mentioned a number of ventures across the world, and obviously with that, you've grown as a leader. Um, as you've evolved as an executive, how has your style changed and what are some of the most memorable moments within that journey? Sure. Uh, I started my career in car powership 11 years ago. The first two years I spent in Iraq, and then uh, I spent a couple of years in Myanmar, and then uh, a couple of years in Africa, Latin America, and other Asian countries. So um, I was humbled by being exposed to so many different cultures and so many different rights and wrongs. Uh, so uh, I am fully aware there is no absolute right and there is no absolute wrong for anyone. And uh, I believe that really uh, helped my leadership journey and um, when I first started as a young woman uh, professional, I was advised to be more authoritative and to be more firm in my requests and my decision making. Uh, but I realized it does not really suit me and I don't feel comfortable uh, wearing that. So uh, I am a, definitely a democratic leader <laughs> if I had to put myself in a, a box. And I really enjoy getting various opinions and making sure that the whole team supports the decision, whether or not they agree with the initial opinion or not. So uh, it's definitely a journey. And uh, I am very, very fortunate to be doing it with a wonderful team and in such high-impact projects. Now, in 2003, you launched Car Powership's Girl Move program. Why was it so important to you to spearhead that initiative? Um, so I'm very appreciative of the female leaders that came before me, uh, the women professionals, leaders uh, before me, who had to pave the path for today. There was no Me Too movement back then. There was no diversity and inclusion quotas. There was a very strong glass ceiling and women were expected to be more agreeable uh, in the meetings. And uh, it was just, and certain roles were found to be more fit. And I am so appreciative of the battles that they fought so that I can easily lead a meeting with uh, my male colleagues, uh, despite what might have been in the past. So uh, I would, just wanted to push that fortunate opportunities forward by educating as many young women as possible, because education is the core of all confidence from a technical capability and motivation perspective. So we want to be able to give them the same opportunities that probably you and I had growing up so that they can be uh, confident leaders in empowering and raising the next generation of female leaders as well. Thank you, Zainab. Um, and ha having already achieved a lot, what still inspires you? So uh, by, I, spent more, I spent more than half of my time uh, traveling for work and the countries I go to tend to be more of developing countries. And seeing the challenges that they have uh, and how easily their solutions are uh, for the regular person on the street trying to get from their home to work is such a simple solution of an infrastructure problem. The road is bad. The electricity transmission system is bad. So they can't open their shop and rely on their fridge working. The, they can't rely on the distribution system that their kid is going to be able to complete their homework at nighttime. 
So these small challenges that can be overcome so easily, uh, seeing that and knowing that I am working with a team, with a company and with a product that acts like a key to opening those doors and resolving those challenges really inspires me to get up and uh, work every morning. And I guess that leads on to the final question in a, in a similar vein and in terms of what impact would you like to have um, when you look back on your career? Uh, I believe it's very important to have equal opportunity around the world, especially for children. Uh, so knowing the disparities of income, education, access to infrastructure, uh, we're as car powership and as uh, myself individually, well, I'll work every day to try to level the playing field as much as possible. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And it's been fascinating hearing about car powerships, future plans, and of course, your, your personal journey to where you are now. Thank you very much for having me. It's, it was a pleasure to explain our story. And we hope we'll have many opportunities to discuss projects around the world and how we are improving lives around the world. Thank you. And thank you also for watching LNG TV and the latest episode of Frontiers and Pioneers. Frontiers and Pioneers, in association with Sempra LNG.